Okay, welcome to episode four in the RC Crew Chief series on the setup or basics of setup. Episode one, uh, we sort of went through an overall view. Episode two, we looked at uh, weight transfer balance. Episode three, we looked at the responsiveness or overall stiffness of the chassis. And now we're going to look at camber and camber gain. Uh, this is arguably the most important part of your setup because this is what controls where the rubber meets the road. So let's switch over to RC Crew Chief here. As we said, rubber meets the road. So as uh, the lateral load on your on your tire increases, this interface here is going to deform. And how much it deforms is a function of the tire construction itself. Uh, a hard tire such as a foam tire uh, is going to have very little uh, deformation in the um, tire carcass as the lateral load increases. Uh, rubber tires going to have a little bit more. Uh, you go to an off-road tire and it's going to have a lot more. So what you have to try and do is use your camber and camber gain settings to control that. So let's just have a quick look here at how we change our camber and camber gain. I think I'll use the uh, rear here because there's two options for setups here. Um, so right now you can see this one. Uh, we have uh, very little uh, camber gain. Uh, basically zero. So if we want to increase that we can shorten this upper link. So if we just move it horizontally, let's just get back up here and let's just move it horizontally and you can see that we're increasing it a little bit. We want to increase the amount that that is changing uh, then we need to start moving the angle down. So you can see as we move the angle down we're getting significantly more camber gain. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can shorten the link, the link even further. So if we move from our uh, outer position on the hub to the inner position on the hub, you can see we can get even more camber gain out of it. So the shorter this link is and the more down angle it has, the more camber gain you're going to uh, going to have in the uh, in the chassis or in the suspension. Let's just set this back to where it was to start with. Um, okay, so let's uh, take a quick look at our two different or three different cars that we've been looking at to show the differences that you're going to have. So the, the Capricorn C801 is a uh, 1.8 scale on-road car uh, with foam tires. So we have a tire that's very hard. Uh, not going to have a lot of uh, deformation in the uh, in the tire carcass, so consequently the camber gain value is very high here, and that is because you want to try and maintain this camber angle as the chassis rolls. You don't want a whole bunch of, of camber change with this type of tire. You're going to end up with a tire that's going to look like a cone. Um, so. Same thing applies to the rear here. Um, you know, there's a lot of lot of camber gain in in this uh, uh, rear tire as well because they want to try and maintain that angle as the chassis rolls. Uh, and these cars are really don't roll an awful lot. As you can see here, the, the roll sensitivity value is very low. So let's look at our other end of the spectrum here, which was our uh, MDX6T Truggy. So now we have a soft tire, we have tons of ride height, and we only have about 0.3 of a degree of camber gain for our 3 millimeter chassis. Uh, pretty much the same in the rear as well. So you can see with a softer tire, you're going to want less camber gain, um, and a harder tire, you're going to want more. So let's go back to our, our little example model here, the 417X, and let's put us back to our setup that we left off with in the responsiveness. So when we finished, we had increased our roll sensitivity, which is, softens the overall chassis, makes it less stiff by about 20%. But what we were having an issue with was our camber, camber angles. So you can see here we were at over one degree. Uh, we added some 
put some uh, droop limiting into it. And let's put some droop limiting into the rear as well. So we got two millimeters, and this is measured as up travel from ride height. So just so you're aware, it's not measured sitting on droop blocks or anything. It's, it's measured as up travel from ride height. Um, so we're sitting here right now with about 0.4 degrees of positive camber at 2 G's lateral. Um, probably not desirable, so uh, let's try and see if we can get this back down into the negative range. And first off, let's just uh, look at using our camber gain. So let's go to the innermost, so we're shortening the length, and let's drop it down. Let's drop it down two. So you can see here now we got 0.3 degrees of uh, camber gain. And our roll center height, however, has raised up. So we're going to have to pay attention to that as we uh, make these changes because just doing that two millimeter change there has now changed our uh, uh, weight transfer balance. So let's apply that. Close this out. So now you can see, yeah, we're getting pretty close. We are just slightly positive. So we are 0 0.04 degrees. So let's go back in and let's take another one millimeter shim out and go just no shims. So now we've got 0 0.41 degrees and let's apply that and close that out. So now you can see we are in the negative range. We're at minus 0.1. So we've achieved our goal just by changing our, our uh, suspension length geometry. We have, however, raised our roll center. You know, we could see what happens if we move the outer link position. So let's just move this in horizontally. So that helps us, gets us some camber gain and doesn't raise the roll center quite as much because our angles haven't changed that much. But let's just... Assume we only want to change one link. Let's just change the inner link. And we'll find that. Okay, so that's the rear done. So now let's have a look at the front. <coughs> now, one thing we have to take into consideration with the front, too, that isn't represented here, is that uh, we are getting some camber gain as a result of the caster angles as the, as the wheels are turned. The next version of RC Crew Chief will have steering and Ackerman uh, information in it, so you'll be able to uh, see the effect of those things in, uh, in these uh, simulations as well. So for now, let's just ignore that and say, okay, we've got, we got 0.75 degrees. And what we want to try and do is get this into the... Uh, uh, negative range. The other thing you want to be worth noting here is we've got minus 2.79 to 0.75, so we got about a three and a half degree range in our camber uh, angle change between the inside and the outside tire. So let's see what happens as we change this. We'll pay attention to that this time. So now, okay, so now. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, try and see what we can get rid of as far or improve as far as the uh, camber on our front. So let's move inward and downward because you know that's going to give us the most improvement in camber gain. Uh, roll center height's a little bit low still, so compared to the rear, so let's go down one more. Okay, so now we're 2.69 and 0.44. Let's apply that close out and now we were at 0.75 degrees up here and now we are at 0.34 so we made about a 0.4 degree difference uh, the bottom now or the inner wheel now is at 2.49 so we're not quite there yet but worth noting here is that uh, we have narrowed up the change or the range then in camber change here for a fair bit um, it's gone from 
2.34 degrees to 2.79, so about 2.8 degrees. Uh, and we were at uh, 3.5 degrees, so we've made a fairly significant difference in that. Uh, but it doesn't look like we're going to be able to keep our roll center heights the same, our weight balance the same, uh, and just do all this with camber alone. So simple solution is we're just going to change our static camber to 1.5, and we'll apply that. And so now our static camber is at 1.5 and we are now into the negative range. We're at minus 1.6. So there we've achieved what we wanted to try and do here. We've got our uh, uh, camber on our outside wheel into the negative range again. Uh, we've maintained our balance. If we just run our animation here, we see that our, our push loose bar graph that's showing us our, our weight transfer balance is staying right in the middle so that's good uh, let's go back to our so let's save this copy new settings uh, let's create a new setup okay so now we've got a new setup here and we can see where we were where we're at uh, we have a roll sensitivity at 1.1 we were at 1.2 when we started this exercise so we've lost uh, about eight percent of our uh, roll sensitivity uh, because when we started this whole exercise, we were at 1.2, and now we're at 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, the base that we started from was 0.98. So, so we've definitely uh, reduced the uh, roll sensitivity a fair bit. Uh, we have maintained our weight transfer balance. We're still sitting at essentially neutral on our push-loose bar graph here. So we've achieved all our goals. We've made a whole bunch of changes to this suspension setup uh, and made significant changes to it. Uh, but we have tried not to screw up our handling. So this is how you can do it. You can use the simulations in RC Crew Chief to make your adjustments and make smart adjustments, knowing what the effect is going to have on other things. And sometimes you're, you can make your compromises uh, quite easily. So I think that's all I wanted to talk about in this one. So that should be it for our, our setup series. So if we just look at our summary here, so our camber gain is controlled by the length and the angle of the upper camber link. Uh, use that to, to adjust, increase or decrease your camber link or camber gain. Uh, the other thing to pay attention to is that your camber gain also affects your roll center heights. So when you're making camera gain changes on one end of the car, you're also affecting the roll center height. So that can have effects on responsiveness and on your weight transfer balance. So you need to pay attention. Uh, the whole goal with camber and camber gain is find that sweet spot for that tire. Once you find that and you know what it is, then as you move to different racing surfaces, you should be able to uh, use that information to your advantage. and, and zero in on your uh, uh, optimum setup a lot faster than you can by just you know making uh, sort of haphazard changes so that's it for this one uh, up next we're going to start putting everything together into one and show how to make significant setup changes uh, knowing what the effects are going to be so if you want to keep up to date on the latest uh, YouTube videos, uh, follow, uh, follow us on Twitter or uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel or like us on Facebook and you will be notified when new information is available. Stay tuned.